the seats hey everyone welcome back to the channel i decided to start doing these kind of fabric mail vloggy style crafting vlog things mostly because there's only so many tutorials that i can squeeze in in a calendar here before i've covered the entire breadth of sewing <laughs> there's it's like I'm, ha I'm struggling to come up with unique things you know things that that kind of apply to um bag making and like specifically as opposed to doing like just general sewing like here's how to do a flat felt seam and stuff like that you know it's this there's there's lots of content like that on youtube but the other thing is like a lot of you pe people who watch the channel you people um don't know me and and don't watch my twitch streams and so you're not really exposed to like the fullness of my crazy personality um, so these kind of help with that a little bit, I guess. So, um, so I thought I'd open mail and go through some of the stuff that I've gotten and like my plans for what I'm going to do with all these things. And then some of the crafting stuff that I've been working on on the side that's not necessarily sewing because I've been doing a lot of things to kind of keep my mind occupied on something else. So let's hop right into it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get my really crappy scissors that I absolutely do not use on anything except for paper <laughs> and start opening these packages. So the first package is actually from Cosmic Fabric Creations um, and she has sent me strike offs for her Paper Mario inspired series. So for those of you who don't know what a strike off is, there's a lot of custom fabric groups out there and they use sewists to do uh, like example work um, to kind of show off the fabric and get people excited about it so that it can be pre-ordered. Because as you can imagine, it's really expensive to order fabric. And a lot of people go to China to order it. So they have to order several yards at a time. Like the minimum order quantity for a lot of places is 20 yards. So, but the quality is so much higher than that that you would get from like spoon flour or something. So it's just, they print differently. And, the, and it's so much more vibrant. I think you guys are going to really like this. So I'm being careful. She does actually use plastic bags to wrap her stuff. I'm very thankful for that because when people don't, it leads to accidents. And I'll tell you that these packages are not very sturdy. So they fall apart. And I've actually had fabric mail get in. It has been eaten by the machines at the Postal Service. No one's fault, really. It's, it just happens, you know? and when you have, you know, 80 to to $100 worth of fabric, not that I'm bitter, it tends to, you know, get broken. So, oh my gosh. Let me put this down on the main, on the little, like, top-down camera so you guys can see this a little better. Oh my gosh, look at this. I'm so excited. Also, don't mind the third-degree burn. This is what happens when you care about beauty and you wax your eyebrows, but you spill the pot of wax on your thumb. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Look at how vibrant that color is. Oh, it's actually like slaying the camera right now. <laughs> it's like, this is just a webcam. So it, it's kind of, it's like super bright. Holy cow. Now, I designed this. And what I'll tell you is that doing the purple with the blue as the highlight tone was an absolute accident. So the background was actually supposed to be a darker blue. And I changed it to purple just like to look at something and i was like oh that has to stay that's really nice um but you know, it has a mario star and a coin this is so this is what we would call a coordinate so for bag making i probably wouldn't use this as the exterior but i would use this as the lining so that's a really good one and then here is a a toss and it's called a toss because the characters are kind of just thrown in there um, and tossed about and you can see that I made it so it's not directional because I absolutely hate directionals um, I'm one of those people who will forget To uh, to place my templates or my pattern pieces the correct way Gosh, She sent me like one of everything. Oh, okay. This is the original blue So so you can see this there's a stark contrast to these so but I like the purple I'm super fond of purple um, and by the way, I drew every single last one of these characters. <laughs> it's like, 
no tracing. I just drew it um, and and got this put together for her fairly quickly uh, for this inspired by. Okay, now for those of you who do bag making specifically, this this is a stack. So I've taken all of the characters and kind of just squished them all into a stack so there isn't any available white space. I like this more for bags. Um, it's busy, but it's, it makes a bag very attractive and it's a much more compact pattern as opposed to this kind of looks like something you'd buy at like a, a big, a big business craft shop. You know, I'm trying not to use names because they don't sponsor me or whatever, but you know what I mean? It's like the, the, the white space or purple space as it were. Um, this doesn't look as good on bags to me as a stack, but that's always a personal preference. I'm not judging anybody for their decisions and what they like to do. Clearly, why would I do that? I'm not that judgy. I mean, I'm judgy, but you know, pick and choose your battles. Oh man, okay. And then here's the blue with, with the toss. So this was the original design and then completely by accident ended up with this one. So I, I'm loving this. So my plans, let me, uh, well, hold up. Before I go into plans, I'll just switch to the camera so you can see my face when I go over the plans. Okay, now that you can see me as I speak, my plan is actually to make like a little, uh, well, two bags really. So on tonight's stream, which you guys may or may not see this today, but it'll be July 31st starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to make a very small, like almost cell phone styled um, uh, crossbody bag um, with this fabric as the exterior. And then I'm going to probably use the blue as the interior. Um, and then my, for the next one, I actually have a convention raider I wanna make. And that's my pattern. I have a whole tutorial on that here on YouTube. So if you guys need to see it, um, it's, it's under, it's under, it's under, it's under my bag patterns playlist. Um, and that's a fun pattern. Speaking of, which I can just like roll that beautiful bean footage right into the next package. Oh, I've got a box over there where I'm tossing trash. This is great. I'm so professional, guys. Um, so I thankfully was able to get an order in for the convention Raider acrylic patterns by Tops and Bobbins. Um, Denise is awesome and they were able to digitize my pattern and get it into acrylic format fairly quickly. So I am very excited about this because um, I preach this all the time. If there's a bag that I'm going to make more than like five times a year, I want an acrylic. I am very big on trying to get time savings. And so for me, acrylic patterns kind of afford me that time savings and I'm able to get stuff cut out quicker um, and fused faster. So that's the part that I hate the most. I tend to try to do that stuff off stream unless I'm just in a real chatty mood anyway. <laughs> most of the time I am. Look at me, I can't stop talking. Five years of streaming will get you into that kind of mode. But um, I, you know, I just, I try to get that part done quicker and the acrylics really do save me time, which in turn save me a buttload of money because I can make things quicker, can sell them quicker. Um, so, oh, this is awesome. So Thompson Bobbins will send you with these little, uh, with a, um, little wire hanger, um, and labels. So, you know, which one it is in case you can't read the text that's on it. Oh, that's fun. She sent me a fat quarter. I wonder if she meant to send me a fat quarter. Thanks for the fat quarter, Denise. <laughs> I'll message her. <laughs> All right. So, and they send it very carefully packed because the stuff is extremely, like, it's easy to break. And don't worry, I recycle all of these things. We keep them in the closet here. Um, and when I send out stuff. I basically take that. So she double packs everything. So this was flat packed inside the box. Um, I'm so excited to see this. It's so surreal. It's kind of like if you were a writer and you got your first, your first copy of your book printed 
by a publisher it's like oh that's really cool um that's what it feels like as a pattern creator to get either a published version of your pattern or like an officially digitized scan in acrylic format it's like it's it's so surreal like i never thought that i would ever end up in a place where i'd be able to make my own patterns much less sell them uh, so for anybody who's paying attention to the video, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. It is, it's been fun. And, but the challenge is trying to come up with something that's just like not another tote, <laughs> you know, cause I had an idea for a very small shoulder tote and I'm like, no, that looks like that one. <laughs> or it looks like that one. And, and trying to be very careful, like, uh, and, and part of designing the bags is understanding that you're never going to get it like a unique pattern. But you should at least try. Blatantly copying people is horrific, uh, not to mention unethical as F. So I just try to be very polite and cognizant and do a ton of research before I put a lot of time into it. Like I was going to do, I was going to do a cane wallet, something exactly like the cane wallet. I'm getting one. And, and then I found the cane wallet and I was like, no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to use her pattern. Why would I make something like another pattern that's pretty much exactly like this? It's like I just, yeah, you know, it's just not, it's not nice. That's what my kids would say. It's not nice, mom. I mean, I'm usually nice. Oh, okay. She wraps it all up in paper. I'm sure this is the most interesting video you'll ever see on the internet. It's not as entertaining as cats. Not the movie. Cats, like actual cats running around, which I could do to boost my videos, but I don't because I'm ethical. All right, tossing that. Oh my God. Okay, so here's all the pieces. Oh, that's, the, that's awesome. They even used my fonts and everything. So I won't bore you guys with the details of like peeling off the stuff, but if you've never received one of these patterns and you're like just now, you know, getting one or thinking of getting one, I buy mine in fussy cut. So before I remove the backing on this, because there's a protective backing on it, um, I'll show you. Here's the fussy cut. Whoop, get it in there. So if you don't order fussy cut, if you just ordered standard, you'd only get this half. If you do fussy cut, it's mirrored. I personally like that. And they even go as far as to put like a little dotted line. So you can tell like if you're composing your bag correctly on something that's like, like the Lola, for example. Like I try to do good two-thirds composition on that. Um, like rule rule of thirds, sorry, not two-thirds, rule of thirds. Um, so, and I can't do that if, you know, if I don't have this, it's a lot harder. Also paper patterns makes it really hard to do that too. You're like flipping up the side and like looking at it, making sure you've got it right. Um, you know, if you use the striped pattern, these are great because you can actually see if you're doing it correctly. Although, by the way, for stripe patterns, just a little quick tip. If you use one of these guys here, like I have um, this like yard by 24 um, cutting pad, um, you can just put a, you know, a ruler down to make the line and then line up your fabric to it or whatever. Sorry for so explaining that. Um, anyway, if you have never gotten one of these before, this whole like, this vanilla manila looking color in the back is just a protective sheet and all you do is use your glorious fingernails and peel it off Ooh, fun so there we go and then i'm showing you a clear pattern it's not gonna focus tease anyway i won't bore you with the details of ripping all of that off even though it's extremely satisfactory holy cow so as you can, on each of these, there's a hole at the top. That's what the little ring is for. And if you see my um, sewing studio tour video, you can see I've like got pegboard. It's right behind this camera though. And I hang everything up on that pegboard if it fits. If it doesn't fit, then I just chuck it into my overflow closet, which is just outside. This room is smaller than the one I had before. Go figure, right? Okay, so other craft. I've gotten into resin pouring. I haven't made any videos on it because it is literally like, like watching paint dry, only slower, lot slower. It's, it's like, 
I'll put it together. Like I'll I'll do I'll do the uh, the video, and then I have to basically time lapse it or be like, and I'll see you guys in twenty four hours. So I've been making coasters. So here's one. You see, I get in there and focus. I made this one for a friend. It's got some. Uh, it's got a D twenty, D four, D six, but they're all miniature. And what I do to get that kind of cloud effect is I'm using uh, alcohol ink. It's really cool. Um, and I'm actually going to be making a um, a resin wrist rest this weekend. That's kind of what I got into is wrist rest because I am I'm an absolute nerd and I'm into mechanical keyboards. I mean, if you guys don't know, I'm also a programmer by trade. So I I started making resin wrist rest. This is a Metroid inspired. You can see the little Metroid floating in there and it's floating in space. And the entire back of it is just a black painted resin. So I used a resin ink to dye the resin um, and then poured it in different layers and applied glitter and effects. So it actually looks like it has depth. It's really cool. Whereas with this guy, this was a single pour um, minus the doming. I don't really count the doming, but um, if you guys are interested in any of my resin craft stuff, I was thinking of recording the one I'm doing this weekend. Um, just kind of walk through it and be like, hey, here's how I'm doing this thing. Um, and just come back and record as I apply layers. So what I do is I apply a layer, I wait three hours, I come back, I mix more resin, I make the next layer and repeat until I've gotten to about the height that I want. This wrist rest is my first one and it is a lot higher than I intended, um, but it's awesome because I, I was able to fit so much stuff into it but this is the mold let's see if i can get over here so in order to make it we actually took a piece of pressed oak and i resin coated the oak three times to get it nice and smooth because the trick was trying to get it to a state where i could make a mold out of it that would prohibit me from needing to sand because if anybody has ever tried sanding resin it is not fun. It is absolutely the worst thing in the world. Like I, I made this tester and I started to polish it last night and it's cloudy and you can still see scratch marks on it. So unfortunately I'll have to dome this one. This is just a simple coaster as a test. I'll have to dome it because now it's cloudy and I can't get it fixed. So, but then I used a smooth on um, mold star uh, silicone pour in order to make a mold and so this is the mold for it and I'm I'm really looking forward to being able to um, to make the new one this weekend because it's Zelda inspired and I think that's gonna be really nice I even have a Triforce that I am painting over and over and over again because unfortunately the paint is not the best so I have to apply in multiple layers um, so I mean that's basically what I've been up to and I really appreciate being able to just do this, talk to you guys and say, hey, welcome to my life. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a lot less formal than a tutorial video, um, but I guess it's giving you guys a little insight into who I am and my personality a little more um, because I can be myself in these videos and stuff like Miss Business, let's get the tutorial over with. Um, so, I would appreciate any and all suggestions for things that you guys would like to see me do uh, in the channel. Other tutorials, um, I'll try to do the resin one because I think it'd be kind of cool. I'm trying to stick to crafting, but I also consider doing some of the coding stuff too. Um, but I think that's a huge divergent from like sewing and resin art. Um, but in any case, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I will have an another tutorial soon-ish. Um, coming probably next week or the week after. So thank you everybody. And if you see this on July 31st, 2020, I'll be streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash fierce kittens. So maybe I'll see you guys there.